Hello everyone, welcome to Professional IAS. This is me, Sayyash Uriyatullah. Today we are doing the current affairs from 21st May to 28th May. So there is a link in the description where you can purchase the last 18 months of current affairs from May 2024. And if you purchase it, the next 6 months of current, uh, current affairs or till December 2024, you will get the current affairs updated in the same course. You will get it free. So whatever we are discussing every three days, every four days, every seven days, these current affairs will also be updated there. So no need to worry about it. You don't have to go for another uh, institute uh, current affair material because this is it. And I have been always telling you that whatever we are reading, this is enough for all the examination because we are reading the most crisp and most concise and precise find a kind of current affair. The moment UPSC exam happen and any other exam happen, I will make the comparison of our current affairs with them so that you will get a lot of belief in what actually we are doing. Okay, right. So as simple as that, I always tell you that I will pause the video and see the list of topics. If you are aware of these topics, then skip it. If you are not aware of this topic, stay with me. It will be a very wonderful session for your preparation. Let us start our discussion with one by one all the topics. Before that a small question is there. Please do this question at the end of the lecture. I will be telling you the answer. Operation Nir is associated with which of the following countries? Maldives, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Thailand. With the name, with the word Nir only, you will be able to understand that which country it belongs. That was a hint. Right. Let us start our discussion. Cost Inflation Index. You might have seen the economy wholesale price index. You might have seen consumer price index. You might have seen index of industrial production, right? These are the indexes you have seen in economy apart from that HDI, IHSDI, etc. So and so forth. This is a very good index, cost inflation index. Basically, the total concept about this particular index is I have taken an asset. I have taken a land area, right? After so many years, what will be the increase in price of this asset? As because I, I have already told you in the basic classes, the meaning of capital asset is nothing but the asset that can generate income. The asset that can generate income. That asset is called as capital asset. Now my land is there. Will it generate income or not? Yes. If I sell, it will generate income. If I give it uh, on kiraya also, that is on lease or rent, again it will generate income. So land in my capital asset. Now. Suppose I bought a land area of 50 lakh rupees today and after so many years what will be the price of this land whether it will increase or decrease if it increase what happened on my capital asset I have gained something if it increased right on my capital asset I have gained something it means it has increased that is only called as capital gains and as because for after a long period of time I am selling it and the asset nature is also to exist for a long period of time. That's why it is also called as long term capital gains. Okay, this particular index measure the same long term capital gains. It will measure whether it is in the form of a bond also, whether it is a form of a security also like sovereign gold bond scheme is there eight years. You are trying to see that well, how much amount of increased price you will get adjusted with inflation okay so today i purchased a sovereign gold bond scheme of 11000 rupees which is nothing but 2 grams 11000 rupees so after 8 years this 11000 gram uh, this 2 grams of gold how much price it will increase will i get the will i get more than that from this bond or less than that that is that particular calculation is called as long term capital gains adjusted with inflation okay right the cost inflation index cost of buying an asset today i bought a land today then what will be the increase in this asset over a period of time the cost inflation index is used by the taxpayers like us to compute gains arising out of sale of capital asset after adjusting with inflation okay suppose i purchase 50 lakh rupees of land now then after 10 years, I sold at 60 lakhs. 10 lakhs, I earned the income, extra income. I gain extra from this capital asset. But after 10 years, what happened? The inflation is 5 lakhs. So actual gain is how much? Only 5 lakhs because the value of money have decreased over a period of time. 
okay to do all that calculation this particular index has come into being according to central board of direct taxes for the year 2023 to 2024 this cost inflation index stood at a 348 percentage as per the notification of CBDT. The income tax department notifies CII in the month of June. Every June you will get this particular index. Cost inflation index is notified under the Income Tax Act of 1961 every year. It is popularly used to calculate indexed cost of acquisition. Index means if I purchase one particular asset today, what it will give me gains in future that kind of measurement or the process is called as indexed okay index means what is index here what is included index is nothing but included what is included here inflation is included where it is included in the cost of acquisition what i am acquiring land i am acquiring so index cost of acquisition we say like that while calculating capital gains at a time of sale of the asset when i am selling what is the inflation what is the earning that i will get normally if a asset to be considered in the in the category of long term capital gains it has to be with you for 36 months suppose i got a land so after 36 months only if i am selling and if i get the more price or less price doesn't matter but it should be the transaction should be done after 36 months so minimum period of holding the asset should be 36 months since prices of goods increases over time resulting in the fall of the purchasing power CII is used to arrive at the inflation adjusted purchasing price of the asset okay purchasing price of the asset as to compute taxable long term gains now as a direct tax government of India okay also levy a tax on uh, our capital gains that is itself is called as capital gains tax CGT we call it as so in future if I purchase an asset today, like land, if I purchase 40 lakh rupees of land area, if I purchase, in future, this, uh, the inflation will increase. So whether, when I sell this asset in future, after 10 years or 5 years, do I cover my inflation or not? This is one point you have to see. Along with that, if I gain on this particular asset, the government will collect a capital gains tax. So this two have to be removed. Then what is uh, left out what is the increased price will be there that is called as a, your actual grain your actual gain i guess this is all clear to you right then montevideo convention very important one convention on rights and duties of states okay it talks about convention on rights and duties of states 1933 it came into being it identified four condition so that uh, a country a area should be recognized as a state first one a permanent population is there that is in palestine a permanent population is already already there defined territory yes palestinian has got a defined territory government yes palestine government was there already capacity to enter into relations with other state why this has come into news means recently sweden and uh, Ireland and uh, Finland no not Finland Sweden Ireland and Norway these three countries have recognized Palestine as a independent state formally as a independent state main important aspect about being recognized as a state is suppose I, I as a uh, like uh, you as a Palestine I as a uh, like Ireland I recognize you as a state means now I will talk to you directly without any interference from any other country. So you will have a government, I will talk to you, we will both make an agreement, I will supply water, you will supply oil, I will supply food, you will supply technology like that. This is called as what? Being independent means in the affairs of foreign relations there should not be any interference and inter inter hindrance from any other country. That status of a country is called as independent state. So recently the three countries whatever I have told you have recognized Palestine as an independent state. Now people ask them, why did you recognize them? Okay, when US is not recognizing, Germany is not recognizing, all the superpowers are numb with regard to the genocide, whatever is happening in the Palestine, and Israel is anyhow not listening to ICJ, not listening to any of the world courts also, not listening to anybody, right? So in the midst of this, all of a sudden, white countries, means white speaking and English speaking countries, they have recognized it. 
So when people ask him, why did you recognize? Means they said that, see the convention we are having in the world, we honor the convention. The convention says four important criteria. On the basis of these four important criteria, a particular area could be designated as a independent state. As because at this point of time and before also, Palestine satisfies all of these criteria. That's why we have recognized them as a independent state. That is important. Now, whenever you talk about Israel or US, Germany, France and also India also, they always push for two-state solution. Okay, they always push for what? Two-state solution. Then what is the meaning of two states? Whatever the disputed land of Palestine, Jewish, whatever we are having the war, okay, that land, the superpowers and also India advocates what two-state solution. What is the meaning of two-state solution? Now here you can see very properly, this green area belongs to Palestine. This yellow area, no, the green area, we are belo uh, belonging to a Jewish state. The yellow area or you can say the orange area belongs to what? Palestine. Palestine, Palestine. So two states happen and this, this area, Jerusalem. Okay. Al-Aqsa, Masjid is also there here. The holiest place for Christians, the holiest, uh, Jewish, the holiest place for Muslims. This particular place, Jerusalem, will be governed by United Nations as a separate body. A separate body will be there which will govern this particular Jerusalem which will take care of all the issues related to Palestine and Jews or Israel with regard to entry, exit, with regard to area of development etc. and so forth. It will be done with the consensus. This is called as two-state solution. The 1947 United Nations Partition Plan for Palestine. And the resolution number, sometimes they ask in the last UPSC 2022, they ask the labor convention. So you should be also knowing the convention number. Propose the establishment of a Jewish state and an Arab state is nothing but here Palestine and the city of Jerusalem, which should be administered by a United Nation as a corpus separatum, as a separate body. This is called as two state solution. Okay. Now T100 carbon fiber. This carbon fiber is very very important in making of lots of defense products like you can see here you can make hydrogen cylinders, you can make missiles, you can make PSLV, GSLV like launch vehicles, aircraft, bulletproof jackets. So T100 uh, carbon fiber is very very important and now actually we import it. We import this fiber and we make our missiles, launch vehicles etc. so and so forth. Now Neeti Ayak chairman has told, Neeti Ayak member has told VK Saraswat, he said that India will start manufacturing T100 type of carbon fiber in the next 2.5 year. Means by, 20, by 2027, we will be producing our own T100 carbon fiber. We don't need to import. Baba Atomic Research Center, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and Mr. Dhatu Nigam Limited. It is also there in Hyderabad also. We call it as Nidhani. These institutions are involved in the making of T100 carbon fiber. Then PM Kusum scheme is there. Uh, the aim of this scheme is to make solar agriculture pump installation more accessible to farmers under the PM Kusum scheme. Means farmers should not use electricity because using electricity uh, for the irrigation purpose for the bore well will only escalate their cost. So we should have a solar run uh, what bore wells. Solar run bore wells will decrease the cost of production of the farmers and farmers will get what some extra money. Okay, because no electricity bill will be there and the bore wells are more important because they will start in the morning in the 11 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock to maintain the temperature of the area suitable for the crop. They have to do the bore well thing again and again, again and again. That is the reason if they are using solar, their money will decrease. Okay, cost of production will decrease and they will have some extra income. Okay, that's why under this scheme, solar agriculture pump installation should be becoming more accessible. Okay. So under this three important components are there my dear students. One is setting up of 10,000 megawatt of solar power unit, installing approximately 2 million standalone agriculture pumps, solarizing 1.5 million agriculture pumps. 1.5 million nearly around 15 lakh okay, bore wells have to be solarized. That is also one of the important objective. For this purpose, center has allocated 34,422 crore. If I am a farmer want to have a solarized pump set, solarized bowl well, I can take the scheme. Okay, under the scheme, I will PM Kusum scheme I can take. Under this scheme, whatever the assistance I will get, it will get from this particular allocation. 
Under the PM Kusum scheme, the center provides 30% subsidy for the solar pump installation and solarization, while the state contributes around minimum 30%. 30%, 30%. Okay. Oxford Economic Global City Index have come. Okay. At 350, Delhi highest ranked Indian city. So let us see what they are talking about. With regard to what? Development. Development of human being. Like I am there. What is the meaning of my development? Like I got education or not. What is the meaning of my development as a, as a human capital? It means I got skill or not. I got qualifications or not. That is called as what? Human capital. Delhi has scored 350th rank in the Oxford Economics Global City Index. Okay. This index has compared world thousand largest cities and have various parameters ranging from economics to human capital means a one city is generating how much economy how much money is being generated for a particular city gross city domestic product that is also being taken and what kind of people are there in that particular city whether they are more developed or less developed more educated or less educated that is all about it however no indian city could make up to top 100 top 300 also the national capital is the delhi is only the best performing city which is also ranked which is ranked very very far 358th the index contains five category what is the economics of the city whether the city is self-sufficient in generating our own resources and produce a lot of goods and services human capital means the capital is literate illiterate all that and quality of life how it is there infrastructure facilities are there in the uh, multimodal transportation system okay safety and security of the women okay all the children parks okay amusement parks mental well-being physical well-being okay ease of transportation okay pollution free all that quality of life is there in the city or not environment governance how the uh, uh, city is being governed uh, okay e-commerce m-commerce all that will come into existence all these criteria will be taken and cities are being ranked new york ranked first on the index followed by london in india bengaluru is ranked 411 Okay, my Hyderabad is ranked 564. So we are very, very far with regard to any of these parameters. Okay, ranked 50, 578, Pakistan, Islamabad and Royal Pindi were the best performing cities in Pakistan. Okay, Article 329B, recently what happened? Our elections are done. Okay, now after the elections are done, it is the duty of Election Commission of India that in every polling, polling booth, how many uh, voters have come and how many people have voted, all that information should be given publicly. But Election Commission of India is not giving. That's why Association for Democratic Reforms, this particular NGO, went to the Supreme Court and uh, as a Supreme Court, please you direct the Election Commission of India. We want, uh, we want booth-wise voter turnout and Form 17C vote tally records. How many people have come and voted and the, the, they are taking no while giving the vote they are taking that paper no that paper so number of votes and paper we wanted we want to see that whether there is duplication like one person can go 10 times also but cannot be doing that particular tick mark 10 times no that is not possible because the printout will come only one box one person will come so they wanted to do the tally in order to have a very fair and uh, very just uh, elections and this particular thing if you see election commission and election related issues or election related features all of these has been included in our constitution part 15th of the constitution and from article 324 to 329 deals with all election process article 324 gives the election commission to direct and control the complete elections what they have done recently article 329 is having two clauses one is but so when this NGO has put the petition in the election uh, the Supreme Court, Supreme Court said that we will not do not do this at this point of time. Let the total election happen. We will consider it later on. Like that uh, Supreme Court has said. Why Supreme Court has delayed this? Why Supreme Court has said this? The answer lies to the article. Article 329A says that judiciary is not allowed to challenge the constitutionality of laws relating to the boundaries of electoral districts or allocation of seats. Okay. Means whenever government like my Hyderabad is there, may be divided into five constituencies, may be divided into six constituencies, may be divided into two constituencies, may be given five seats, may be given ten seats. So when government is doing this kind of delimitation of seats and the boundaries, Supreme Court is barred. Means judiciary cannot review all the decisions of the government in this particular case. Plus Article 39B says that any changes, challenges to the conduct or result of election to the House of the Parliament or state legislature must be made through a designated legal process that is called as election petition. 
So if at all, if anybody is wanting something with regard to election process, okay, this is not fair election, this, has, this election has been rigged. If any complaints are there with regard to the elections conducted, then they can file a separate uh, uh, petition. That petition should be called as what? Election petition. The Constitution 19th Amendment Act of 1966 defined Clause B of the Article 329 stipulating the election related inquiries are exclusively addressed through election petition. So when you are filing the case in the Supreme Court with regard to any of the election malpractices or booth capturing whatsoever, you have to mention in your, uh, what, what I say is that you have to mention in the petition that it's a election petition. Remember this point. Okay. Then we are having Mission Ishan. Mission Ishan is nothing but we are having airspace. Airspace is nothing but the planes that moves uh, uh, in the Indian airspace. However, how much our India is there? The total sky belongs to India. That is called as our space space. So we are having four airspace regions are there. Okay. To merge four airspace regions into one single entity, Mission Ishan has been started. The full form of this is India single sky harmonized air traffic management. Okay, right. Kamya Karthikeyan, 16 year old Kamya Karthikeyan has become the youngest Indian mountaineer to scale the Mount Everest from Nepal side. She went from Nepal, not from India. She also became the second youngest girl in the world to achieve this feat. Okay, for India, she is the youngest. For the world, she is the second youngest. Kamya has completed already six milestone in her mission to submit the highest peak of all seven continents she has already gone. Okay, Mount Vincent Massif in Antarctica this December to become the youngest girl to accomplish the seven summit. Summit is nothing but the peak of the mountain is called a summit. So she has become the first Indian to go to all the seven, all continents. Okay, highest peaks she has went. That challenge is called as seven summit challenge. Okay. World Intellectual Property Right Organization Treaty, a big win for India. So you might be aware of this fact. In India, a lot of uh, tribes are there, a lot of our elders are there who will say that if you are having a fever, take healthy. If you are having this, do this. If you are having, if you want to pro what, protect your rice from any of the uh, pest attack, then put neem leaves in that. So we are having a traditional knowledge. We are having a indigenous knowledge. That particular knowledge is not known to anybody else. It is known to only Indians and the ancestors and the elders who are there had taught us. Okay, but uh, whenever we are doing this practice, it is not in the world. It is not actually uh, what protected this intelligence. This intelligence of our ancestors, elders has not been protected. And the processes and products that are coming out of our traditional and indigenous knowledges has been not protected across the world. That is the reason we are having a problem and people are misusing our traditional knowledge. So, World Intellectual Property Rights Organization, it is an apex organization that look after all the protection of intellectual property rights. Recently, a treaty was concluded where intellectual property, genetic resources and associated traditional knowledge, traditional knowledge will also be given what? Intellectual property. Anyhow, intellectual property, whether you write a book, whether you make a product, you will get it. But traditional knowledge based intellectual property will also be protected along with genetic resources. Genetic resources means India is blessed with like many other countries will have their own plants, will have their own animals, will have their own genetic resource base. So that particular genetic resources will also be actually protected. That is what they have told. The treaty will establish international law, a new discourse requirement for patent applicants whose investments Inventor are based on genetic resources and associated traditional knowledge. Suppose if we uh, what develop a product or a process which is based on our ancestral or indigenous knowledge, then also it will be getting what patented. No other uh, person, no other manufacturer of any other country should use this traditional knowledge once we have used and filed it. Okay, that is a big because India is a hub of traditional knowledge. We will gain a lot. Okay, Cyclone Remel. Cyclone Remel is a tropical cyclone. The name Remel has been coming from the word Arabic called as sand. Was chosen by Oman because the naming of uh, cyclones is according to a procedure laid down by the international organization. So India cannot name all the time. We'll name few, they will name few. That is how it goes. So now uh, Oman has chosen the cyclone name as cyclone Remel which means sand. Okay. The National Disaster Management Authority cla classifies the cyclones into two important groups. Extra tropical, tropical. Tropical means which are between here. 
okay 0 to 20, 23 degrees end of north 0 to 20 degrees uh, end of south this is called tropical extra tropical means near the after capricorn after cancer any cyclones go that particular area then we call it as extra tropical cyclones a cyclonic storm you can say or a cyclone is an intensive vortex means nothing but a will like that in the atmosphere with strong winds means faster it it goes not a slow one faster is good in the anti-clockwise direction ulta in the northern hemisphere because of the Coriolis force and clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere remember this point the cyclones moves anti-clockwise in the northern and clockwise in the southern hemisphere and they are given different different names we call it as cyclones okay we Indians call it as cyclones and any countries in the Indian Ocean call it as cyclones okay and uh, in US around who uh, they call it as hurricanes in Atlantic Ocean typhoons over Pacific Ocean willy willies over Australian seas and cyclones we call it as in the Indo-Pacific region so remember this point the cyclones are given different different names by different according to the continent and the countries article 334 in the news um, the, um, uh, Rahul Gandhi ji is saying that reservation I will increase okay BJP is saying that no allegations are like that BJP is saying that Rahul Gandhi will increase a, a reservation Congress government is saying that BJP will remove the reservation so reservation topic is coming into the picture so expected question could be there on it article 334 of your Indian Constitution reserve gives not 334 will come to that 330 and 332 two articles we are having which provide reservations for SCs and STs in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha article 330 for SCs article 332 for STs to provide elections with regard to Lok Sabha and state assemblies. The constitution while providing the spe for special treatment of SCs and STs uh, is because to achieve equality. They, but they have not specified that which caste to be in SC, which caste to be in ST. They just told that SCs and ST should be given special preferences under Article 330 and 332. Okay, in, and reservation of seats should be given in Lok Sabha and assemblies. But they did not specify which caste to be there in SC and ST. And this particular uh, identification of any caste in SC and ST is left to the president. Okay, as per the article 341, those castes notified by the president are called as SCs and STs. If the president says that this is a caste is SC means, then that caste will be called as SC from that time onwards. A caste notified as SC in one state may not be in on the same uh, as may not be SC in other state. This is also important. This vary from state to state to prevent the disputes as to whether a particular caste is accorded or not. Okay. Now drone wall you can see that this is nothing but all the drones are there at the border of the six countries nato led us led nato or uh, this particular uh, nato wants to build a drone wall with regard to all, all along the border of what russia which is having what uh, connection with uh, six countries or sharing border with the six countries on and if they are not sharing also they want to have a border so this is how the drone wall looks like Okay, the minister of six NATO countries have agreed to have a unified drone wall to defend the six countries, okay, which are bordering Russia and Belarus. Okay, the, the, the six countries are Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Poland, Finland, Norway. Don't need to remember for the examination, it will not come. Drone wall, where it is, that's all. The initiative aims to bolster regional security and counter perceived threats from Russia and Belarus. In order to protect the six countries from the Russia and Belarus attack, the drone wall has been agreed by the NATO-led organizations. One-liners are very, very important. India has emerged as the sole nation among the top five steel producers in the world. China is presently the global producer of steel. India's foreign exchange reserves climbed by 4.549 billion to 648. Okay, 454 billion to 648 that is 454.9 this is 648.7 so billion reserves question may come in the examination important cyclone level is going to hit India and uh, Bangladesh so West Bengal Orissa Mizoram Tripura South Manipur very very important remember the states which are going to be affected by Rimal they will ask you specifically Srinivas L. Kulkarni an Indian origin professor of astronomy has been given the prestigious award of Shah Prize in astronomy okay the 10th world, uh, world Water Forum on a theme of water for shared prosperity officially opened in Indonesia's Bali Island. Among the 195 countries in the world, Egypt is ranked the driest country in the world. 
and it is Egypt is having only 0.7 inch very very small amount of rainfall it will get that's why Egypt is called as driest uh, okay uh, country in the world the country is well known for the Nile river is the longest and the only survival link if the Nile river is gone means Egypt is gone world Kuwait world tallest communication towers has been built in Kuwait we call that uh, tower as liberation tower world largest flowers are known as uh, largest flowers are known as rafflesia and these the very big flowers you will find in what malaysia some important disasters are given here bhopal gas tragedy took place in the year 1984 okay jaipur oil depot fire took place in 2009 thane explosion of 2016 visakhapatnam serene gas leak of 2020 okay and blaze with natural gas okay things we are in 2020 these are the industrial disasters some of the most famous industrial disasters i have given with years very important those who are having disaster management as their particular subject in the prelims this is all about current affairs on 2128 i'll come with more thank you bye bye take care do enroll and purchase the courses given in the link bye bye